Many people in the diaspora are contemplating and trying to make a decision of whether or not it is time for them to repatriate to Jamaica. And there are also people in Jamaica who are deliberating and weighing up their options as to whether or not it is time for them to exit Jamaica. These two groups of people are looking for a range of different factors that are associated to whether or not Jamaica can become their home or should continue to be their home. And I had a comment from a subscriber uh, recently and it made me, it prompted me to want to do a video as to whether or not I would choose Jamaica again. Jam from family, the jam from family, yeah. Jam from um, hang with me. Hello, 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 Wagwan. Pick up yourself, whether you're there, you're there, you're there abroad. Welcome back to another episode of Life with the Jam Fams. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about would I choose Jamaica again? Now, I've lived outside of Jamaica for my entire adult life up until the point when I decided that I was going to repatriate to Jamaica. And in making up my mind and deciding whether or not to come to Jamaica was not easy. There were many factors that I considered and most of the information that I was getting, whether from mainstream media and some of the social media feeds that I was also seeing, as well as individuals and the things that they say and the news they had to report, were all things that were alarm flags um, telling me to be very cautious about the choice to move to Jamaica. However, I contemplated the fact that there are other places in the world that I could move to and I've even looked at some, especially on the continent of Africa. And when I weighed up all of these, there are a few factors that I weighed in and I'm going to share some of those factors with you because maybe those are some of the things that you might need to ponder and consider and see how that might help you on deciding whether or not you should choose Jamaica. At the top of my list when I was looking for the different countries was language. Now because I know that I'm an English speaker the only thing else I speak is Patois and although I did a uh, Spanish in high school, I have so long not really used Spanish that I would not be able to hold a conversation beyond the mere formality if I was supposed to move to a country that spoke Spanish. For me, language was important and that language needed to be English. And so I started to look at English speaking countries that I would actually want to move to where I can be able to have a quality of life that I did that I'm looking for. Of course, the next thing that I also ensure that I look at is the weather. Now, I wanted to know that I was going to be in a country where I had tropical weather. I didn't want to be in a place where I was going to be cold and having to contend with winter. And yes, um, up in the hills of uh, Manchester does get really cold, especially in February, January, February time. But it is nothing compared to the freezing ice chill cold of um, England or of Milton Keynes, where we were moving from. And so for me, I wanted to make sure that the weather conditions was going to be good. I also wanted to know that there was going to be lots of outdoor activities that we could choose to go off and do, whether paid or unpaid, and be able to enjoy doing those and be in enough of a youthful state to go out and enjoy doing those. I also want to be in a country where I knew that my human and religious liberties were not going to be compromised. So therefore, I could choose to um, worship the way I want to worship and not having to make compromises on that because that's a significant part of my life and the way I, I choose to live my life. And although there is a bit of work still needed in Jamaica to ensure that the human rights, privileges or entitlements that we have are more enforced, uh, on a whole, I still have my human liberties um, here and they are, they, are, they are not necessarily compromised. They just need to be a little bit more enforced. And the reason I believe that they're not as enforced is because Jamaicans have this way of life where they are just laid back about certain things and they don't really make certain things become a big bother and a big trouble to worry to them so long as they can get on with doing what they want to do. Um, and in such, I believe that as a population, they sort of compromise on some of the human rights privileges or entitlements that they have. And I'm sure that over the next few years, a lot of that will become more embedded and therefore more evident in our day-to-day -day activities. As a British citizen, there are many places across the world that I could have chosen to go and relocate and would be perfectly fine because there are a lot of spots where expats are, British expats are, and they are doing perfectly fine there. However, because I have dual citizenship, 
and I know that I can move back to Jamaica. It was something that I felt that was a good thing for me to do. There is almost three million people living in this country and they are living perfectly healthy and um, good quality of life for the majority of those people. And at least over a quarter of those people are repats. So people like myself who have decided that they're going to be returning to Jamaica at different stages in their life. Some people have chosen to do so at retirement. Some people have chosen to do so significantly earlier. There is also a significant number of expats that lives on the island and who are constantly choosing Jamaica. Although there are significant numbers of people who leave Jamaica each year, whether they are leaving to go for economical reasons, for short-term work or for longer-term contracts, or they are leaving for family reasons where families have filed for them to come and join them, there are significant numbers of people also returning to the island as repats or expats. The next factor that was important to me was peace and social stability. Um, in Jamaica, for the greater part, there is peace. Um, there is no wars, no civil unrest, no political unrest. And those, those things aren't things that exist. Of course, you will hear about crime and violence um, in pockets of areas within the country. However, on a whole, there, this, the social fabric of the country is well intact and well secure. And also, the peace, um, Jamaica is not a country from its history to be plagued with civil unrest, tribal wars, or ethnic feuds. And therefore, um, and hopefully that will never happen in its future. And so it, it creates a little bit more of a stability when we think about um, needing to move to a country where you can rest assured that you will feel safe. There are incidents of crime that do happen. And when those happen in areas, the government and the Jamaica Defense Force are quick at action to ensure that they increase their presence and if needs be to put areas under curfew and are vigilant in trying to ensure that they find, apprehend and bring to justice the people that are involved in these events and these activities. And so on a whole, um, the safety, the peace and the social stability of the country is one of those things that ranked highly for me with the countries that I was exploring and contemplating moving to. The other thing that I also look at was the cost of living. I didn't want to move to a country where it was going to be more expensive to live there than it was to live in the UK. And therefore, when I looked at the cost of living, I factored in accommodation, food, clothes, transportation, and all of the other basic things that we need in order to be the to, to survive as according to the Muslim hierarchy. Um, and so I recognized quickly really, that Jamaica was one of those countries in the top four uh, better cost of living, especially when you have the opportunity for currency arbitrage. It therefore means that you don't then need a lot of income in order to be able to survive um, in Jamaica and to be able to live a fairly middle class lifestyle. And for me, it wasn't a, a priority to be able to come to Jamaica and live lavishly or to keep up with the Joneses or to do any of those things. I just wanted to move to Jamaica where I can have a minimalistic lifestyle and I can be frugal with the monies that I have and therefore be able to enjoy my life for the longest period. Of course, it is very obvious that I am not at pension age and therefore um, not able to get access to that just yet. But I've also made it clear to you on previous videos that the myth that people have with regards to the amount of money that pensioners get when they return to Jamaica is very much a myth. And the reason they tend to move back to Jamaica is because they have the means, i.e. they have accommodation here where they can come back to. And their prevailing health conditions are such that they are able to return to Jamaica and live a, a good enough life when they come here and so they make the choice to move because if they were to remain in the countries where they are getting this pension from they would literally be living below the poverty line because it is that mediocre what the pension package actually is and as they are pushing the age further and further along for pension it means that people will need to wait longer and longer if they are to, to do so so many people are choosing to save their money up or others are choosing to find vehicles of investment so that they can actually do so and then be able to return earlier than their retirement age. Which brings us to the next factor that I look at, which is the way of and quality of life 
that you're able to experience when you're in Jamaica. I was watching a video the other day and the person was making reference to the fact that they moved out of America and they went, um, I, I don't, it's not the, the Caribbean, but they went away to a different place. I think they went somewhere in the continent of Africa. And to their surprise, the medical conditions that they were struggling with when they were in America has somehow just gradually and over time with the foods that they're eating, the sunshine, the exercise, the peace and tranquility, the calmness of life and the pace that they were living at has significantly reduced their stress and allowed their body to just be regenerating and getting better to the point now that they don't even have the condition that they were suffering from before. And there are a significant number of people online who have made reference to the fact that they moved from one of these so-called developed countries and moved somewhere else where the way of life and the quality of life is very different and it has had profound impact on their health, not just their physical health, but also their mental health and where they had conditions that they were suffering from, they have quickly disappeared or is much better for them to manage and need a lot less constant supervision than it did when they were living in these countries. And so the way of life and the quality of life that I could experience in Jamaica was one of the things that made me choose it. You know, this pace where things are just moving at a pace where on one hand it can be annoying when you have a time sensitive deadline that you want to meet and it's taking a lot longer than it should and you are pressed for time to get it done. But on the other hand, it allows you to stop and just be able to enjoy the life and the process as you are going along rather than just rushing, rushing and never actually stopping to enjoy any of that life that you are living because you are so busy like a hamster on a wheel churning and turning. And so the quality of life here, the food that you're able to get straight from the farm, which is um, with reduced level of chemicals that's in there and fresh, and you can actually taste the quality in them when you eat them. The fact that you are able to have um, this lovely sunshine, which limits your frequency of experiencing SADS, which is seasonally affected disorder, um, which people tend to have during as they go through autumn and into winter or as they come out of winter and going into spring and summer. And so um, it, it creates a much healthier existence. And people might say, oh, but to do that, you need money. Well, to live anywhere, you need money. And so it's just having a think about, well, how can you reduce the amount of things you're going to need to buy and the amount of things you're going to need money for? And many people in Jamaica live on, um, if they don't live in gated communities, and even people in gated communities plant their own crops, um, providing it still meets the requirements and doesn't go against any of the rules and regulation of those gated communities. But many people, majority of Jamaicans do not live in gated communities and they tend to live on quarter or more acres of land and they are able to plant the things that they want to eat. You know, they have little bit, little homesteads where they plant what they want to eat and people share with each other the crops that they produce with their neighbors and with their social network so that everybody can have the experience of different things without the high cost that will go to it. And yes, shopping for food and things like that are expensive in Jamaica. And people might say, well, why are they? But a lot of the things in Jamaica, even if they are locally branded, there are still some element of imp importation that has happened in order to manufacture and produce the things that we have. Because some of them might say are made in Jamaica and they're packaged by local companies, but packaged is as far as it goes. They're packaged, they're imported here and then packaged, and therefore they're still going to be um, costing a little bit more. And to get rid of that, the primary thing is that as a country, we just need to be more of a producer to match our level of consumption consumerism because unless we do that the cost of these things are not necessarily going to go down however you find that you see so many things that you can go out and do if it's even to, to go for a hike and it makes such a difference the sound of the birds chirping going for to a river going to the beach and so many different excursions that you can go on and adventures to be had and yes there are people going to other parts of the world and having the same experience and having it at an equally low cost and all the things that I've just mentioned um, for, from the list of factors that I've spoken about here. Um, however, for me, this one last thing that I'm going to share with you was the thing that sealed the deal for me. And that factor for me was and is familiarity. I'm familiar with the Jamaican landscape. I'm familiar with, with a lot of the different things and the nuances. And I'm learning and readjusting to them because I've been away from them for so long. Other than one month visits over the years, 
and so I'm learning how to adjust and to adapt to the different things and I know that it, it will take time but in the meantime I'm enjoying myself living here one family said to me the other day and they had moved their young family back to Jamaica over 20 something years ago and even at this point along the journey the one of the persons in that family said to me that they are living their best life in Jamaica and this is a family that moved back from Britain to Jamaica and they, they are living their best life here uh, is, the, is their statement that they've said and so it's, it's a way in which you get into recognizing that you have to live it to actually believe it because some people have moved away for so long and the neighborhoods they're moving from is still the, the idea that they have as the concept of Jamaica and Jamaica is very different it's vastly different from parish to parish from community to community and so it's about getting out there and seeing what different parishes and different cities in the country have, or towns have to offer and then be able to see how you can find a place that would be suitable for you and fit these conditions we decided that we were going to do an experiment and of course in Eliona's style she decided that we should experiment so I agreed that we were going to experiment because she found a recipe she, she wanted us to try. So she decided to do hers with Irish and I decided that I was going to do mine with sweet potato and this is what we made. Yeah, I made sweet potato waffles and I made enough for two days, so I'm showing you my second day. And so I'm having it with baked beans and callaloo, and I'm having it with some steamed vegetables. And we also had it yesterday with tuna as well. So it was interesting. I quite like the taste of it and that we found another creative way that we can utilize this food. So hopefully we think we might be able to do it another time. And so we're looking to do it another time. Hopefully we'll get to do so. So, Eliona, what did you think about it when you did it? It was okay. I did, made mine with Irish potatoes. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Would you make it again? Yeah. It tastes like jacket potato, but if the jacket potato was a piece of bread. Is that because of the shape? Okay. Because I like a taco Oh, because yours were squares, whilst mine are somewhat circular. Mm. So, would you make it another time? Yes, but this time I'd make it more of a batter instead of a dough. Okay. So that's how you would tweak it. And you're going to sort out your dinner today. So today is a... Good old craft mac and cheese. <laughs> today is a make-it-yourself dinner. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We're so. having leftovers and I'm having the leftovers of what's in the cupboard. <laughs> but that's a new pack you're opening, isn't it? So you're just going to figure out what you're going to like put the together. Leftover from the four pack. Okay, that makes sense then. I see the logic in that. So why you have on a robe? Because I'm cold. <sighs> it's actually cold. <laughs> People, the temperature in mandible um, actually shift. You I've can been feel it. i about five layers for the parsley. This is this coming from somebody who have to go through England cold, right? It's not cold in England. In I, fact, here now it's colder. <laughs> I guess it's because you have the heating, and and here you don't have heating, so you have to you have to do layer more layering and here. My room was hot, just like how my room here used to be. Oh, like how you like to keep your room here? But someone wants to keep opening the windows and turning <laughs> it into an ice room. Uh -huh, because I you want need it as a sauna so I can sleep properly. You need fresh air. Well, um, it hasn't gotten to its coldest yet from from our experience from last year, so we know it's going to get even colder. You're going to have to bring out the quilt a bit early. <laughs> but I do agree, the temperature has definitely changed. This time last year, it wasn't this cold, from my recollection. It was actually not that. This time, isn't it? Because we haven't even gotten into October yet, and I remember even in October was quite warm. But we'll see. I'll let you go make your meal whilst I'm going to go enjoy mine. And you're going to, your mouth will be watering while I'm enjoying mine. <laughs> no worry, me go make you some. <laughs> Answering the question, would I choose Jamaica again? Absolutely, positively. If I had to go back again and to go through these factors and come to a conclusion of where I was going to go and live, 
I would absolutely positively choose Jamaica again and again because it's a lovely experience to be had living in Jamaica. Hopefully this video has given you some insight and some things to deliberate and to contemplate with regards to making the decision as to where you're going to be moving to. And if it's Jamaica, then that would be a good decision to make because indeed Jamaica is hiring and Jamaica proper nice. You just need to know where you're living that will satisfy all of the needs that you have and that of your family. Thank you for staying with us here on this another episode of Life with the Jam Farms. Bye for now and we will see you in the next one.